Okay, this is the uh, loaf of fluorite phyla video. There are three different phyla that we need to um, examine in this one, and we're just going to be looking at them uh, briefly uh, because these are things that you are going to be rec seeing, and hopefully that you can recognize them um, while you're diving out there. And so these things, what unites them, they're all the three different phyla. They all use a um, common feeding structure called the lophophore. Alright, so we're going to be looking at phylum bryozoa, uh, which are the lace corals, phylum brachiopoda, which are the lantern shells, and phylum foranita, which are foranid worms. While well, lantern shells, red lantern shells, are in your second year collection, so it would be good to know what you are looking for and looking at when you do collect those shells. Okay, so what is the loaf of anyway? It's a crown of hollow ciliated tentacles, which we'll be looking at the structure of in uh, much more detail later on in this um, video. And the tentacles are used to capture small organisms and organic debris. And um, it's also used as a gill. The gas exchange occurs across the tentacle wall. All right, here is a picture of a lace coral, phylum bryozoa. Um, here is a picture of uh, a clonia radiata, which is the kelp that you um, probably see the most of when you're diving over about four or five meters and down to about 30, depending on the clarity of the water, 35. And, uh, but you'll see all these little white patches on top of these kelp fronds. So again, this kelp is not just a stalk that lives in isolation, but it creates habitat for lots and lots of other uh, organisms, just like the top canopy of a forest. And one of those organisms that you'll see quite commonly are these bryozoans or lace corals that live on the surface. So look for these when you're diving next time. And here's a close-up of what one of those lace corals would look like. So this is, I should have a, um, a scale bar on here to really not let you know what, what you're looking at. And so my apologies there. But you're talking about um, less than a millimeter. These things would probably be a half a millimeter for each of these little cells. And inside each one of them, you can see the little body of the animal that lives in them. And these would have all been cloned off from one starter um, uh, organism that settled the uh, this colony and then built the colony. But these are little clones and that's why these things are called a colony and each of the of these little um, what we would call zoids or polyps very much like a cnidarian polyp uh, it lives within its own little cavity and together they collectively make up the uh, colony of the, bro the lace coral here is a picture of lace corals. You could quite easily be forgiven for thinking that this is a plant. Okay, these are. Uh, there's another colony that looks very much like a plant. Okay, these are bryozoans. Here's one from Tuhua, a picture that I took. And you can see all of the little feeding uh, tentacles out here and here. Okay, and here and here. It's a stick bryozoan. You'll see a few of those. Here's another picture of stick. Uh, actually, this has a few different lace corals. Uh, my apologies. I keep just touching on this keypad with my that touchpad with my thumb and picking up the picture. Uh, anyway, you can see lace corals here, and these stick uh, bryozoans here. Okay, and then lots of sponge and other things uh, grow and crusting on the rock. So. Anyway, so let's have a look at common of uh, the phylum bryozoa, the general characteristics. Very, very common. Uh, you'll see these in most um, shallow marine habitats that you're going to uh, that you are going to be experiencing. Very small in size, with a wide variety of forms. The three classes uh, you don't need to know these for the exam, but anyway, they are phylactolemata. Uh, Stena lemata and Gymnolemata marine. 
Gemna Laminata include the majority of the living marine species. Okay, they're very often um, uh, sort of ecologically significant because you'll um, find lots and lots of nudibranchs on them. Okay, and they're also very important in filtering out uh, water. Okay, so you often find nudibranchs feeding on these things. Okay, their structure, they're usually colonies they're, that um, are sessile, which means that they're settled, okay, so they don't really ever uh, li exist as planktonic forms. Um, they may take up lots and lots of different shapes, the colonies. And each of the little tiny zoids, if you remember animal, zoid means uh, uh, an animal, you're a zoid. Uh, but each of the little zoids, which are polyps, um, are roughly a half millimeter in length, and they can be, uh, they can take a lot of different shapes anyway, like we said, box-like, oval, or tubular. Okay, and let's have a look at what they look like. Okay, so you've got the sheet, that the, which is their little apartment in the apartment complex of the colony. And within it, the animal lives, okay? And these things are no bigger and probably a lot smaller than a lot of uh, cnidarian colonies like hydrozoans. But if you remember how simple a hydrozoan was, it didn't have any of these organs. So this is a triploblastic organism with a big muscle here, okay? Um, anus, intestine, stomach, uh, lots of different muscles. Okay, um, the slophophore and tentacles, and all, even though it is very, very small, it's still a complex organism um, and uh, much more complex, much than a cnidarian. And it looks like a cnidarian because it's got these tentacles, all right, okay, but they, they always exhibit this characteristic shape which is sort of like this bell shape and they also they don't have nematocysts they're not um, uh, they don't have nidocytes they don't sting and capture their prey they just filter it out so these tentacles are ciliated and they draw water through by the motion of the cilia much like a molluscan uh, a bivalve and they um, filter water the filter the organic particles out of the water. So when you look closely at a column, you can or a colony, you can see um, all of the little uh, lophophores sticking out of this colony. Okay, so that's very. Uh, again, I should probably have a scale bar, but we see that these are very tiny organisms with um, heaps and heaps of little lophophores filtering out the water. Here's another picture of the loaf of force. Okay, so um, yes, this is the structure which unites all three of these phyla. They all have the loaf of force for filtering out water. Okay, which again evolutionarily suggests that they have a common ancestor. Okay, they have an exoskeleton which is protein, uh, chitin, or calcium carbonate. Okay, which is a little bit different than the um, shell of a uh, cnidarian again. And this coats the bryozoan and provides protection. They could be encrusting, they could be calcareous. I have a, uh, a nice uh, bryozoan colony, uh, the skeleton of one, on my um, wall of fame in my office. You can come and have a look at that. That's a calcareous one. And I'll take a uh, lots of different uh, shapes, mostly only a few centimeters in diameter, but some of these um, large ones can be uh, half a meter. Okay. Um, you, they can be a little bit bigger, but you won't see them much bigger in New Zealand. Okay. Um, and Often they have an operculum, which we've seen in lots of other phyla, which closes over the withdrawn tentacles in to uh, make a trapdoor for the sheath. 
Okay, we've seen a perculum in, let's see if you can remember what other phylum. Stop the tape right now. Okay, that's right. It's the um, mollusks with gastropods that draw the operculum over their shell or the annelids, which when the tube worms draw an operculum over their shell. Okay, so that's the bryozoans. Now we'll move on to the brachiopods or brachiopoda. Okay, these are lamp shells. All right, these are things that have been around for a long, long time, hundreds of millions of years. And they used to be um, very, very common, uh, very, very successful, but they've not largely been outcompeted by other organisms in, um, uh, in most of the marine ecosystems of the world. Okay, resemble the bivalve mollusks. They, generally, they do resemble mollusks. Uh, because they have two shelves, two shells, and they're joined at a central point. Okay, much like uh, two pippies shells or uh, mu muscle shells that we looked at in lab. But uh, these ones have two shells. But you'll see that they're a little bit different because the lamp shells will pretty much always, the brachiopods, they always have this little lip rise and then fall down here, as, whereas a bivalve is bilaterally symmetrical because both shells will look the same, uh, with the exception of things like a uh, the myodora, large myodora, myodora strata, and the, and the scallop and things like that. But the, your two pippy shells will look the same on both on both sides. Now these ones, if you drew the line of symmetry across here, they wouldn't look the same, but they do look the same if you draw the line of symmetry across here okay and right down the middle there and so these ones are bilaterally symmetrical but in the opposite direction as a bivalve and you can see the lophophore the ciliated crown of tentacles sticking out of the shell right here and here so these things open up and then just filter water with these ciliated crowns of tentacles the lophophore which are housed within the body of that lamp shell. Okay, this is the red lamp shell and what you're going to need to collect for your second year collection. Okay, this is what they look like in cross section. And in fact, these loaf, these um, brachiopods don't just stop at the shell, but they have a, an anchoring um, sort of tail part to their body that is uh, different from bivalves. Okay. Here is a nice picture of red lamp shell when you can see the lophophores in here, okay, the ciliated crowns of tentacles that are filtering out the water. And you can again see the plane of symmetry right down the center. All right. Now we have lots and lots of uh, red lamp shells and white lamp shells on the rocky reefs that you're going to be looking at, and especially if you go to a vertical wall when um, you're diving then you will see heaps of these if you slow down and take a quick quick look. All right, um, we've pretty much gone through all of this. You can f freeze the video on this and uh, hold it if you want to read through these. Okay, and they are for reproduction. They broadcast spawn for the most part. Um, well, pretty much all they they do uh, broadcast eggs and sperm, but some species will only broadcast um, sperm and then brood the eggs. Um, and we don't really know much about the larvae of these things, um, but that's it for brachiopods. And we finally go on to the foranids, the foranida, which are foranid worms. Okay, and what does that look like? Of course, it looks like an annelid Christmas tree worm, but it is a little bit different, and um, you can tell be based on this structure, which is also the loaf of four. Okay, it's got this crown of ciliated tentacles, which are a little bit different than the um, uh, than the annelid. Um, uh, what do you call them? The um, feathery 
oh, it escapes me right now, but the uh, the filtering structures of the annelids. Okay, so it would you could be easily forgiven for making the mistake that, that is an annelid, though. There's another picture of a, a common foranid that we have around here. All right, so um, beautiful foranid worms. Uh, 20 species known worldwide, and they look very much like uh, polychaetes on the outside, but or from the from the top, but uh, they and they they essentially live their life in a very similar way. But you'll find these things, whereas you won't find feather duster worms. You'll find the feather duster worms, the uh, annelids, on rocky shores and the, and rocky shore and um, uh, hard structures. You find the foranids living in muddy or sandy substrates. Okay, so more of an aggregate type substrate rather than uh, um, like boulders and and hard substrate. Um, the these feeding tentacles uh, are um, attached to a muscle, okay, which uh, is very similar to the muscle in the uh, bryozoans, and they can be withdrawn. And supposedly, the um, that muscle, when you come close to these things and watch how fast they they draw back into the tube, is supposedly the fastest muscle in all of the animal kingdom. Okay. And here we go. This is sort of a the feeding tube, um, or this is the mouth area of a foreignid worm. And again, you can see how complex the body form is. It's much more complex than a um, uh, than a cnidarian. So all of these three phyla, the foreignids, the bryozoans, and the brachiopods, all use the lophophore, and that's probably the main point to be able to take. From this, um, from these videos, but I also want you to be able to recognize these, um, this phylum, if you see them while you're diving.